Hey guys, it's Adam from Tested, and uh, I recently bought a beautiful all-metal god killer sword uh, from Wonder Woman. This is something I've been waiting for for a while, and it's lovely, but it's going to require, it's got a cast zinc handle, and the casting is just slightly misaligned, so it's going to take me a bunch of time to file it, but that's not today's one-day build. No. Um, I've been obsessed lately with watching videos of master engravers doing their business on, doing their business, plying their trade on things like um, watch bands. We'll link to it uh, below this video. Uh, but it highlighted for me a couple things. One, I had no idea how much careful close work you could do with chisels and files. But two, I have never been working with enough light. And last week I decided to remedy that and that is today's one day build. It is making one of these lights to be able to work with enough light. Let's get started. All right, I'm gonna start by running through the features of why this lamp is really, really useful for the kind of work that I do. Um, one, it is very positionable way out to the end of its, oh, I know it sort of settles, but it's way positionable. Um, it's dimmable, so I can adjust the amount of light. It is also adjustable for color timing. What? This is the thing. Over the past few years with the advent of DIY filmmaking, there's a lot of companies now making these, excuse me, digital light panels uh, of adjustable color temperature and adjustable brightness, and they've gotten cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. Um, this kind of panel was literally like hundreds of dollars a few years ago, and now it's like $30. Uh, so this lamp has changed my life here in the shop, uh, and we're gonna build one today, and it's just with the parts on this table. And let me run you through them. The soul of this lamp is this stuff. This is called Lockline, L-O-C-Line, and it is actually a waterproof hose. And it's used for things like delivering coolant in CNC machines. You have seen it in camera stores making the legs of adjustable in grippable tripods and monopods. Um, there are iPhone holders that use these on the end of a clamp, and that's how I got this idea. This is specifically three quarter inch lock line, and 36 inches of it costs about 30 bucks. Uh, then there's a three quarter lock line to three quarter inch NPT threading. There is a three quarter inch lock line wide flame thingamabob. Then there is a power supply. Uh, this is just a 12 volt power supply. Some aluminum armature wire. I'll explain that stuff in a minute. And the actual uh, panel light itself. Look, if you go on Amazon, there are dozens of different versions of this, uh, of this type of panel. Um, these panels are specifically made to receive a battery like a camera battery, so you can keep it powered for long periods of time. We're going to add an actual plug to it so that we can run the power to the inside of the lock line. And like I said, we will include uh, uh, links to each of these parts, but there are also other versions of each of these parts. If you can find them cheaper, by all means, go. As for mounting to the table, um, I made this a few days ago. This is just a bit of Delrin with uh, the port for the three quarter inch NPT tapped out and then four holes to screw it down to my workbench. But you can just as easily make a holder for this. Uh, you could buy a, a female of this uh, three quarter inch NPT and weld it to a C-clamp so you could clamp it to any table. There's like a million ways to solve that problem. All right, I'm going to start by laying out the pieces as I need them. So uh, we start with the panel. That's going to need a plug. I actually pulled this off of an old power supply I had, but you can actually, uh, you can order these from Amazon. That's a straightforward DC plug. I'm gonna wire that down to my power supply. This panel comes with a, uh, a kind of a little, universal mount that allows some adjustability and I used that. It is actually quite useful. So we're gonna use that. So there's that to that to that to that to that to that. And this power supply, I, I ran a small power supply to this and it wasn't enough amperage to power this. 
Uh, so I went overboard and I bought a powerful 12 volt, eight amp uh, transformer. You don't have to get one this powerful, but I don't know how low, I mean, maybe two amps is what you want, maybe one amp. Um, I went overboard because that's what I do. Uh, but it's got a car charger on the end of it and we'll have to remove that. Um, and then there's its plug. Oh, and the armature wire. Um, the armature wire is a key part of this build. If you'll notice, this su supports itself all the way out. And while lock line is in fact quite stiff, it's not that stiff. It can't quite do that. So I helped the lock line by adding some armature wire from here up to about here. And in fact, there's a single piece here that comes down and bends over and comes back up to here. So it's like folded over itself. So I get even a little bit more strength down here than up here, but that's what it took to be able to make it support itself across the whole table. And it's a feature I, per it's a feature I particularly love. Um, so armature wire, this is quarter inch armature wire. You can get this at the art store. It is effectively soft aluminum, which just means I believe straight uh, unalloyed aluminum. Um, and it's not that expensive. I think the whole cost for this build is just around 120 bucks, um, what I spent on it. And again, you may be able to find cheaper parts, cheaper panels, cheaper pieces, by all means, go and uh, make it out of those because you don't have to spend that much necessarily. Okay, so if this comes, oh, that's nice. So this wire can go all the way through my piece before it gets to the power supply. So I'm gonna cut this. Oh, here's a tip. If you have a plug with uh, a bit that you don't want on it, don't cut it here. The reason is, is if you cut it here, you'll never be able to use this. Always give yourself an extra few inches. And now, should I ever need this, it's actually useful to me because I can strip these wires and solder them to something else. First things first with the soldering. Ah, right. A note here. Um, most electronics give you the handy guide of telling you which part, the center or the outside of the uh, of the DC plug that goes into it is positive or negative. And this one says quite clearly that the center is positive and the outside is negative. So we need to determine which of these two wires is positive. And we do that with this guy, a continuity tester. Um, I set my multimeter to do sound. And when these two wires have continuity with each other, they beep. So I put one in the middle and then I touch these two wires until I get a beep. There we go. That is my positive, that's not. That's my positive, that's not. There we go, so that's the positive. I attach the positive to the positive. And the negative to the negative. I am a recent convert to the uh, Dremel uh, butane powered soldering iron, but it's a nice robust little machine. So now that you have the solder, I'm gonna put on the heat shrink. Usually a butane soldering iron will have a hole up here near the tip. That's your heat shrink heating tip. And I'll bring that underneath to gently shrink that heat shrink around the solder joint. Okay, so now I've got the individual wires soldered. I want to actually add some protection on top of that. So I'm gonna seal all those inside of this big piece of heat shrink. Here we go. We can use a torch for this sort of thing. Okay. 
Okay. There, that is the sum total of the electronic circuitry necessary for this guy. What do I need now? Now I need the armature wire going from, going from the middle back and then back up just a little bit. Okay. I didn't fully list out all of the pieces and parts. Um, there's one more bit of extra support that this lamp needs in addition to the lock line and the armature wire, and that is a short length of steel rod. Um, it's literally only about six inches long, but it allows this to stay effectively upright. And that turns out to be important to its operation. So, by the way, if you want to work with mild steel and even hardened steel, just get a pair of bolt cutters. You don't even need a bandsaw for this stuff. You can clip it all day long. In the beginning of my career as a welder, career, in the beginning of my uh, work as an itinerant <laughs> freelance welder, um, I made store fixtures for a store in Hayes Valley here in San Francisco. I made 300 hangers and six clothing racks, basically using only a pair of bolt cutters. Okay, uh, now it's time to make the mount between the, uh, 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 the little GoPro type mount for the screen and the lock line, and here's what I did. I used a universal bit to attach, uh, to drill a hole this diameter through the uh, lock line flange to be able to mount this to the plastic as close as I can to the, uh, to the bottom where the plastic is the strongest. So it's gonna be right around. There we go, that's the right one. Okay, then I want to cut away a bunch of this stuff. So this, by the way, is a Sharpie paint marker and they're really nice. So I'm gonna cut away that and then I'm gonna cut away the back side of this. Okay, so now it doesn't, it doesn't quite, it's kind of wedged up in there, which is exactly what I want. I want a little bit of pressure on this guy. Um, this is a, uh, this, the other end of this screen, has a camera flash hot shoe mount on it for mounting on your camera shoe, obviously. Um, but we're gonna use that to just help us secure this guy down. That, drop the screw back in. Okay, uh, so I now have hard mounted the, uh, the mount for the screen on the end of the lock line flange female, uh, and this is pretty much ready to go. Your results may vary. You may find a better way to attach these two things together. That's totally fine. There's no right way to do this. Um, but now I need to f uh, fish this guy all the way through this tube and then up through here so it can plug into the back of the monitor. How am I gonna do that? With some washers and string. Here's the length of string. Here are some washers. I just need a little bit of weight is all I need. So I'm just gonna take a few of these and thread the string through the washers. Tie a dumb little square knot because I'm lazy this morning and then There we go. Now I'm all the way through, so I can cut this and put these washers back where they belong. Then I'm going to tie this guy, pulling it through. Ready? There we go. Come on, baby. There we are, look at that, we're all the way. Fabulous. This is now the top. Okay, there, that's where this comes up and through. Ah, 
That's what it takes to connect lock line to itself. Then I did, I did, I screwed this up. Okay, I got my order of operations mixed up a little bit. All right, I gotta undo that because I forgot that this thing mounts through a base and through a bit of threaded <laughs> there. And now it goes through that. So I gotta break out the string again. Right, now back through here. Now we've got to attach that guy to that, which is about doing a little bit of this action. And then I need to attach this to that. And I tap this, but it still may require a wrench to get it all the way down. Like I said, I've machined a piece of Delrun to receive this so I can bolt it to my table. Um, but you can just as easily uh, use a female three quarter inch NPT uh, steel pipe fitting and weld it to a steel clamp. That would take about all of five minutes. Uh, you could tap this right into your table if you so chose. Um, there's a lot of ways to skin this cat. What a morbid expression. Uh, uh, uh. We are almost there. This is like the fastest one day build we've ever done. So I'm gonna plug this in. I'm going to plug it into some house power. And we plug it in. And here's the moment of truth. We turn it on. Hey, I hadn't plugged this all the way in. All right, here, let's try that again. The moment of truth. Hey, it works. <laughs> That's a little bit cold. We're gonna change the color temperature down to 42, 40, 4200. Oh, that's really nice. And we can change the dimness and the brightness and do, there's one last step. Right, I forgot about the armature wire because here's the thing, without the armature wire, if I bent this here, it would fall. It would not support its own weight. So the armature wire is the next stage in this. So the armature wire goes in like this, but I don't want this sharp cut end to cut through my wire. So I'm gonna soften it on my belt sand. Now I need its end to be bent nice and tight. So I do this. Uh. Okay, now that should thread up quite nicely into here. You can aid and abet the uh, installation of the armature wire by straightening out your lock line. Yeah, see how nicely that does that? Great. And then you add in the steel pipe, just like that. We can mount this right into our table like that. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. And there you go. That was pretty straightforward and you'll see it supports itself all the way out at the end. You can adjust the color temperature. You can get your light literally wherever you need it to be working on stuff. I, uh, I'm kind of surprised at myself how long I have worked on meticulous things really close up and I have not yet worked with enough light, but that changes now. Um, if you come up with your own solution to this and it's slightly different than this, I would love to see pictures in the comments. That would be awesome. Um, let's all work towards a world with better lighting.